A gigantic spacecraft emerges out of nowhere in the middle of the night, around 8,000 BC, and begins to descend above a tribal community. Except for one man who is unable to stop staring at the ship's dazzling light, everyone in the town panics and flees. Jumping ahead to the 1920s in Egypt, people were digging near the pyramids. A special professor from another country named Catherine and her dad arrived. The diggers showed them some strange flat stones they found. While this was happening, Catherine noticed cool, small things and got interested in a gold necklace with an eye on it. The crowd got excited when the diggers pulled up an even bigger thing, a huge round metal ring with a picture of a creature with a jackal head underneath it. Skipping ahead to 1994, Catherine is older now and in the USA. She's at a talk by a guy named Daniel who knows a lot about old Egypt and its languages. Daniel tries to tell other smart people his ideas about how the pyramids were built, but they just laugh and leave. Afterward, a police officer named Lieutenant Kowalski comes up to Daniel and takes him to a car where Catherine is waiting. Catherine offers Daniel a job, but she doesn't say what it is. Daniel is unsure at first, but Catherine reminds him that he's lost his home and his money is gone. She says this job is his chance to prove his ideas, so Daniel says yes. Meanwhile, in a quiet neighborhood, two officers are searching for Colonel O'Neill. They find him in his deceased child's room. It turns out that O'Neill's child tragically died while playing with his father's gun, and O'Neill has been unable to move on from the loss. The officers interrupt his sadness to inform him that he's needed for duty again. A short while later in Colorado, Daniel and Catherine enter an Air Force base located beneath a mountain. Daniel is taken to a lab where they have the mysterious flat stones discovered in 1928. Daniel is really impressed by these stones. However, when he looks at the translation on a board, he quickly starts correcting all the mistakes he sees. The new translation reads, A million years into the sky is Ra, the sun god, sealed and buried forever in his stargate. Two weeks later, Daniel is still hard at work, translating the rest of the tablets, but he's struggling to find a language that matches the symbols on them. Needing a break, he steps out to get a drink and notices a guard reading a newspaper with an article about the Orion constellation. The picture gives Daniel an idea, and he grabs the newspaper before rushing back to the lab. There, he picks up a marker and starts connecting the lines between the stars and the constellation. He then goes up a ladder to compare his drawing with one of the glyphs and confirms that they match. A little while later, Daniel joins a meeting with all the scientists and officers. He places a star chart on the table and explains that the symbols on the tablets are actually constellations arranged in a special way to create a map with seven points, outlining a path to a specific location. He then draws to show that to pinpoint a spot in any three-dimensional space, you need six points to determine exactly where, and the seventh point is like the starting point. He draws two people next to a V symbol to show this, but the others notice the symbol isn't on the device. Daniel wonders what it means, and suddenly the wall lifts to reveal that they have the stargate found in Egypt. This stargate is made from a mineral not found on Earth. In the control room, they activate the stargate, and it starts spinning. A screen displays close-up images of the constellation symbols. Daniel spots one that looks like a pyramid with a circle above it. He takes a marker and adds two little stick figures next to it, confirming his theory. They quickly input the seventh symbol into the gate, and this triggers a red alert. They make everyone leave for safety. Suddenly everything starts shaking, and the computer screens go wild as Earth is marked as the starting point. The shaking gets worse, and all of a sudden, the Stargate activates. There's a huge swirling tunnel of energy that shoots out both in the front and the back, forming a tall wall of water. They decide to send in a probe. The probe goes up the ramp, stops in front of the gate, and extends an arm. The arm keeps stretching, and then the probe gets pulled through the stargate. The computer looks at the data and figures out that the probe has connected to a spot in the Kalium galaxy. Daniel checks the map and tells everyone it's on the other side of the universe. They start losing the signal and the stargate closes. Later on, they study the pictures sent by the probe. The images show a room and another stargate, so they guess that both gates are linked. They also find out that the planet on the other side has an atmosphere that humans can breathe. 
Daniel looks at the symbols on the other gate and points out they're different from the ones on their gate. The officers want to cancel the project because they'd need to do a risky mission to explore the other gate. But Daniel offers to do the work himself. The team starts getting ready for the mission. Meanwhile, O'Neill goes to see a fossil of the jackal-headed creatures. One of his superiors gives him a secret mission. At the same time, Catherine gives Daniel a raw necklace for good luck as they prepare for the journey. When everyone is prepared, the team goes into the gate room, where the swirling tunnel of energy is already active. They start by sending a rover with equipment through the vortex, and it goes through easily. Then, the team members step into the gate themselves. They're amazed by the bright lights surrounding them as they're transported across the universe. All of a sudden, they find themselves in a very dark room with the other Stargate. They use flares to light up the area and explore. After passing down a hallway, they realize they are within a structure that resembles the Great Pyramid of Giza. They are surrounded by a desert. The alignment of the Stargate is Daniel's responsibility, but he can't do it just yet since he requires instructions. He thought there would be tablets with the necessary symbols, but they were missing. So, they have to locate those symbols first. The soldiers become upset with Daniel for getting them into this situation. One of them, Kowalski, pushes Daniel to the ground, but O'Neill steps in to prevent things from getting worse. While the team sets up their camp, O'Neill goes back into the pyramid. He opens a hidden panel on the rover and places a cylindrical device inside. He starts arming it as a bomb. After setting a timer, he pauses when he notices someone approaching. He closes the panel just as Kowalski announces that the camp is ready. Back at the camp, the other soldiers bother Daniel and toss his suitcase onto the sandy dunes as a result of their frustration with being stuck. Daniel starts the chore of picking up his belongings and taking a break only to have a snack. While he's looking around, he notices large paw prints of a creature in the sand. He decides to follow the prints, leading him to a big animal munching on desert plants. The creature is wearing a harness, but there are no people nearby. Daniel approaches the animal cautiously and pets it gently, even offering it some candy. Just then, O'Neill and the rest of the team arrive and warn Daniel to keep away from possible danger. However, Daniel explains that the harness suggests the animal is domesticated. The sudden appearance of the soldier startles the creature, causing it to run away and accidentally get its harness tangled with Daniel's feet. As the creature dashes off, a screaming Daniel is dragged through the hot sand for a considerable distance until he eventually loses consciousness. Shortly after, Daniel wakes up to the sensation of the creature licking his face. The soldiers catch up and manage to free him from the entangled harness. Suddenly they hear noises and head to the top of a dune, discovering tall rock pillars and people mining them. A boy named Skara notices the soldiers and shouts a warning, causing the other people to freeze. The team decides to approach them. When the people see Daniel's necklace, they all bow to him. O'Neill goes over to Skara to shake his hand as a gesture of peace, but Skara yells and runs off. One of the soldiers examines the mineral being mined and realizes it's the same material used for the gate. Just then, Skara returns bringing their leader Kasuf along with him. Kasuf speaks a few words and bows, but Daniel can't understand him, even though some of the sounds seem familiar. Then Kasuf's daughter, Shauri, along with other women, offers the team bowls of a drink. In return, Daniel gives Kasuf some candy, which he cautiously bites into and finds delicious. This friendly exchange leads to an invitation for the team to stay with them. O'Neill agrees, but makes sure to tell the soldiers back at camp to keep the area secure. Shortly after, the team joins the caravan and walks through the desert until they arrive at a large stone city. When Daniel sneezes due to his allergies and blows his nose, the others find it amusing. Skara playfully takes his handkerchief. Once inside the city, the people bow again and reveal a big disc with the Eye of Ra symbol. Daniel explains that the locals believe the team has been sent here by the Egyptian sun god Ra. Suddenly, chaos breaks out as the citizens start running around. O'Neill receives a call from the camp, but the static makes it hard to hear the message. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the soldiers are caught in a sandstorm and decide to gather their belongings and seek shelter inside the pyramid. In the city, 
People rush to close the gates. Thinking they're being captured, the soldiers chase after them, even using force on a few people and taking two men as hostages. Skara steps in and takes O'Neill to the top of the wall, where he shows him the approaching sandstorm. O'Neill finally understands that the citizens are trying to protect their city, not capturing them. He warns the group that they will be trapped there for some time. The team gets to sample some new and unique foods during the community's evening gathering. Daniel samples a strange-looking animal and happily declares that it tastes similar to chicken. Later on, Daniel attempts to communicate by drawing Egyptian symbols in the sand. However, Kasif quickly erases the drawings with his foot, indicating that drawing the symbols is not allowed. Daniel is then taken to a different room where he's cleaned up and left alone. Unexpectedly, Shauri enters the room and starts undressing, causing Daniel to panic. He explains that such actions aren't necessary and tries to get her to leave. But outside, Kasuf is waiting for them to be alone. Not wanting to offend anyone or get Shauri into trouble, Daniel takes her back into the tent and pretends they're occupied. Using sand, Daniel draws a pyramid and Shauri adds a circle to it. She reveals that she's seen the circle before. Daniel convinces her to take him to it. Meanwhile, the soldiers in the pyramid continue to struggle with their radio, unable to get it to work. Suddenly, a bright light shines down on the pyramid, and everything starts shaking. A massive spaceship appears above, slowly covering the pyramid entirely. The soldiers become anxious, raising their weapons and spreading out to investigate. However, something attacks them in the darkness. One after another, the soldiers are knocked out without making any noise. Eventually, only one soldier remains. He falls to the ground, and when he turns around he sees a guard with the face of Anubis. This mysterious figure and another guard drag the soldiers into another room where there's a glowing sarcophagus. A hand emerges from it, adding to the mysterious situation. Back in the city, Skara spots O'Neill smoking and is intrigued by the fire. O'Neill gives him a lighter and some cigarettes, and Skara tries to smoke like O'Neill but ends up coughing. Skara then tries to grab a gun, but O'Neill stops him with a slap, causing Skara to run away in fear. Meanwhile, Shauri takes Daniel to a cave where they discover a wall covered in earth glyphs. Daniel starts reading them in the Egyptian language he knows, and Shauri helps him with the correct pronunciation, which helps him learn the local language. Back with O'Neill, he tries to communicate with Skara and the other boys using hand gestures to describe Daniel. The boys mimic the gestures without grasping the meaning. However, when O'Neill mentions chicken and pretends to sneeze, Skara finally gets it. He offers Daniel's jacket to a creature that then starts tracking the scent, and everyone follows it. A short while later, O'Neill discovers Daniel in the cave. Daniel begins explaining what he's learned from the writings. A space traveler escaped from a dying world and came to Earth in search of a way to prolong his life. This visitor was Ra, who took over a human body and declared himself ruler. He used the Stargate to bring many people to this planet to work in the mines. The ore they mined helped him develop advanced technology to achieve immortality. However, a rebellion occurred back on Earth, and the Stargate was buried there. To prevent a similar uprising here, Ra prohibited reading and writing to erase the truth from people's memories. As Daniel continues speaking, Kowalski explores the cave and discovers a round stone resembling the one at the center of the Earth Stargate. Daniel gets excited because this is the missing piece he needs. He believes that the local people must have hidden it here, hoping that the Earth Stargate would be reactivated someday. Unfortunately, the stone is damaged and worn out, making it impossible for Daniel to see the seventh symbol. Feeling frustrated, O'Neill decides they should head back to the pyramid. The team leaves and Skara and his friends follow them. When they spot the spaceship, they become concerned. The team enters the area cautiously with their weapons ready, while Skara's group sneaks around to peer through the windows. Inside the spaceship, they discover the team's belongings but find no bodies. Suddenly, the enigmatic guard appears, and before the soldier can react, he's knocked out by the guard's staff. The staff can shoot like a gun, and the guard starts firing wildly in the room. The rest of the team rushes away from the danger. Daniel and O'Neill manage to get to the room with the bomb, 
only to discover it's gone. Suddenly, a circular section of the ceiling opens, and rings descend while a light beam begins to glow. Three guards appear, wielding their staff weapons. Daniel and O'Neill lower their guns and are guided through the beam of light, which transports them to a throne room. The walls of the throne room are now opening, allowing sunlight to enter. Right then, the leader arrives, bringing the bomb along with him. Everyone removes their masks, revealing their human faces instead of supernatural appearances. It turns out that the leader is raw. As the guards kneel to him, O'Neill moves quickly to knock one of them back and takes his staff. He fires and eliminates one of the guards. However, before he can react, the other guard aims his weapon. Daniel intervenes and gets shot, while a group of children surround Raw to shield him. Another guard retrieves his staff and starts beating up O'Neill. Raw orders the guard to stop and approaches Daniel to examine his necklace. After this, O'Neill and the other soldiers are thrown into a water pit. Outside, Skara's group searches the soldiers' bags for weapons. They notice two gliders emerging from the pyramid and flying away. In the city, Kasuf also spots the gliders and raises an alarm, causing people to try to run and find shelter. The gliders shoot down at the city, unleashing blasts that cause chaos and destruction. Kasuf kneels, appealing for mercy, but the gliders continue their onslaught, causing significant harm and casualties. After a series of attacks, the gliders depart. Skara's group returns to witness the devastation. Kasuf informs Skara that this destruction is Ra's punishment for helping the strangers. A little while later inside the pyramid, Daniel regains consciousness inside the sarcophagus and realizes his wound has been healed. When he exits the sarcophagus, it closes on its own. A child with a cat comes to check on Daniel before darting away. Daniel follows Ra until they reach his chambers. When Daniel asks whether Ra had died before, Ra explains that he chose humans precisely because their bodies are easily repairable. He expresses his displeasure at the gate being reopened, as he plans to send the bomb back along with a shipment of the special mineral to enhance its destructive power a hundredfold. Despite being the creator of civilization, Ra now desires its destruction due to the betrayal and intends to establish himself as the only god. He begins by taking Daniel's necklace. In the cave, Skara's group searches for Shari to inform her about Ra's call for an assembly that includes an execution. However, Shari proceeds to share the story that Daniel had revealed, allowing them to finally learn the truth about their people. Shortly afterward, the citizens gathered around the pyramid for the assembly. Ra and his guards appear wearing masks. They hand Daniel a staff and order him to kill the soldiers. During this, Shari, Skara, and the others blend into the crowd. Skara uses the lighter to reflect sunlight and grab Daniel's attention. He signals that they have the soldiers' weapons. Understanding the plan, Daniel pretends he'll harm his friends and then swiftly turns around, shooting at the throne instead. The boys fire their weapons too, causing chaos as everyone scatters in panic. The guards retaliate by shooting their staffs at the crowd. During the chaos, a few people, including one soldier, lose their lives. Fortunately, the rest manage to escape. However, shortly afterward, the team finds themselves trapped in a sandstorm, and Daniel collapses from exhaustion. Fortunately, Skara and his friends arrive to help Daniel up and guide the team to safety. Eventually, they reach a cave where everyone seeks refuge. Inside the cave, Skara shows the soldiers the weapons they recovered. O'Neill expresses interest in taking the weapons back. Kowalski suggests that the boys could assist them in the fight, which unexpectedly triggers O'Neill's anger. Daniel intervenes and encourages O'Neill to talk about the bomb. O'Neill reveals that he had secret orders to look out for signs of potential danger. If he discovered any, he was supposed to destroy the Stargate. Daniel shares information about Ra's plan and emphasizes that it's Earth's Stargate that poses the threat and should be shut down. However, they still lack the seventh symbol needed for that. O'Neill promises that he will intercept the bomb before it can be sent through the Stargate. Meanwhile, Ra is infuriated by his guard's failure to capture the team. He uses a special device in his hand to painfully and slowly kill one of the guards as a form of punishment. Back in the cave, 
Daniel discovers that everyone believes Shari is his wife. Curious, he asks Shari about it. She explains that she didn't tell anyone that Daniel rejected her. To prove her wrong, Daniel kisses her. The following morning, Daniel finds Skara creating a drawing to commemorate their victory. Observing the depiction of three moons, Daniel connects the dots and realizes that it's the symbol for the planet, and thus the point of origin for the Stargate. This discovery means they can finally return home. Later, the group heads to the mines where the citizens are once again being enslaved. They shoot a guard, which triggers panic among Kasuf and his people. Daniel rushes to remove the guard's mask, revealing that he's merely a tyrannical human exploiting them, not a god. This revelation shocks everyone. In the pyramid, the guards are preparing the bomb. The team arrives disguised as slaves carrying ore. Once inside, they reveal their weapons and launch an attack. A fierce firefight ensues as more individuals enter the pyramid to join the fight. Some individuals are injured during the battle. One of the guards shoots at the door to seal the entrance, but O'Neill returns fire, killing him. Suddenly, gliders exit the pyramid and target the people outside. Kowalski guides the group on how to hide and counterattack. They suffer losses while defending themselves, prompting Kowalski to make the difficult decision to surrender as guards approach. Inside his chambers, Ra is enraged by the turning tide of the battle and commands his men to send the bomb to Earth immediately. Just then, the team reaches the bomb, and O'Neill initiates it. He explains that he'll stay behind to detonate the bomb after everyone returns to Earth. Suddenly, a guard appears and shoots Shari, gravely injuring her. In response, Daniel swiftly shoots back, killing the guard. Filled with desperation, Daniel lifts Shari and takes advantage of an opening in the ceiling. He carries her to a sarcophagus, which rapidly heals her injuries. Meanwhile, another guard emerges from the opening ceiling and engages O'Neill in a fight. Simultaneously, Ra locates Daniel and uses his artifact glove to inflict harm upon him. With only three minutes remaining on the bomb's timer, O'Neill fiercely battles the guard. He manages to overcome the guard and activates the gem on his hand, causing rings to descend. O'Neill positions the guard beneath the rings, resulting in his demise. The rings also activate in another area, diverting Ra's attention. This distraction allows Daniel to retrieve the necklace before the rings transport him and Shari back to the room with the bomb. Outside, the guards are on the verge of capturing the rebels when suddenly Kasuf arrives with his people. They swiftly encircle the guards and eliminate them within moments. Witnessing their defeat, Ra initiates his spaceship, which starts ascending to carry him away. Inside the pyramid, O'Neill attempts to disarm the rigged bomb but struggles. Fortunately, an idea occurs to him. When the rings activate once more, they transport the bomb through them. It materializes in the spaceship, causing an explosion that ultimately eliminates Ra. The entire planet rejoices, and Skara and the boys salute O'Neill as a gesture of gratitude. O'Neill reciprocates the salute to express his appreciation with respect. Shortly after, Daniel activates the Stargate. He hands the necklace to O'Neill, asking him to take it to Catherine. Daniel has decided to stay behind with Shari. The soldiers pass through the gate and come back to their houses amid the bright lights.